Hey, what's up guys? This is Eugene Pentland from Pentland Designs, and this is a part two in my video series of how to build an electric longboard. Today I'm going to be soldering all the components together and testing them. So the first thing you do is separate the connectors on the batteries, so you can put the XT90 connectors on the battery so they could be in series. You have to cut the connector end off of the red cable on one and the black cable on, the other, on another. Once you've done that, you're going to want to take the two XT90 connectors and as you can see I already have one on my electronic speed controller from the build that I had done previously so I'm just taking my other part of the connector and matching it make sure it lines up correctly and once you're going to do that you're going to make sure the red goes with the red and the black goes with the black first I have to take apart the XT90 connector the, the bottom part of it it takes a decent amount of force to take it off so I'd recommend using some pliers you're also going to need to make sure you strip part of the cable that you took the connector off so that you can solder it on. Once you do that, you're going to want to take the bottom part of the XT90 connector and slide it down and through the red cable and the black cable that you just stripped. And you have to do it now because if you forget to do it now, you will not be able to slide it on later. Um, my soldering job isn't all that great, but it stays together and they're not going to come out. Once you've got it soldered and secure, you slide the bottom part of the connector and then snap it back into place. So the end result should look something like this. XT90 connector with a black and red cable from each individual battery and then the XT90 connector on the electronic speed controller. So once you've got that done, you can actually get around to testing it to make sure everything's working properly. So what you do so first, I'm making sure the electronic speed controller switch is off. I'm going to connect these two bullet connectors together first, because these are not anti-spark and connecting them after might cause problems. So connect those two together first. These two cables are the balance cables for charging it. We're going to combine these two together a little bit later. First, we're going to connect the motor to the electronic speed controller. So blue goes with blue, yellow goes with yellow, and then the black goes with the orange. You're going to want to connect this 3-pin connector that's attached to the electronic speed controller into channel 1 of the receiver, and then when you turn it on, oops, I forgot to plug it in first, so connect these two connectors together, and when you turn it on, if it's the first time pairing the remote to the receiver, there's uh, some steps that you're going to have to take to do that, the process for doing this on almost all controllers is the same. I'll have a link in the video description showing you how you compare your receiver to your controller. I'm going to turn my controller on and I'm going to turn on everything. So that was the startup sound for the motor and you know everything went well when that happens. And when I push down on the trigger, it spins the motor. So everything here is good to be, is good to go. The last thing we're going to need to do is take these two balance connectors and turn them into a 7-pin connector. The 7-pin connector I'm going to be using to, to put the balance cables together and this is the connector that goes to the charger which goes from these two end cables and that's what brings the total current through. I wrote a little diagram of how it's supposed to be. The shaded box is the one red cable that I have here. So the next thing we're going to do is take our batteries and we're going to cut each of these cables, strip it, and then solder them together in the pattern shown previously. So the first cable that needs to be soldered is the red one. So I'm just going to cut that as close to the connector as possible. And then I'm going to take, I have an X-Acto knife. This is a design I'm working on that will come out in the next few days. Not finished yet. I'm just going to take a blade and roll it along the cable. And that will strip the cable easily and that is done. So now I'm just going to repeat this same process for all of the cables making sure that they do not touch in the meantime. Off and pull the top right. Alright I'm just going to cover the ends of all of these cables in electrical tape for now just to be safe to make sure they don't touch. Now that that's complete, I'm just going to repeat the same process on the second balance connector. 
I'm going to take my connector and the first thing I'm going to do is take the red cable and I'm going to solder it to the red cable on the first battery. Now I'm going to grab the second black cable and that is going to be soldered to the yellow. Now that all these cables are connected and it makes one six pin connector, I'm going to show you how to charge it. So now that it's all connected, the first thing you want to do is grab your charger. Before you plug it in, you're going to connect the seven pin connector in. On mine, the seven pin connector is right here. Once that's plugged in, you're going to want to take the charging cable connect both of these in, make sure it has the correct polarity, black with black, red with red. And now I'm going to connect these two together, the male and female ends, they only go in in one direction. Okay, now that that's all together, I'm going to grab my power brick for it, and then I'm going to plug it in. Default setting on mine is a 2S LiPo battery. We're going to want to change this to a 6S LiPo battery. So hit start, start twice, change it to 6S, and then for the amperage I'm going to put it at 2.5 amps. I wouldn't recommend going above 3 amps, but generally the slower you charge it, the longer the batteries are going to last over the long run. So now that this is all together, I'm going to hold down the start button. And it confirms that there is a 6S battery, and I'm going to hit start. Oops. The point of balance chargers are that the batteries that you come with, that I bought come in three cell variants, which there are three individual batteries in each of these. So as you can see when going to the charger, going to the side, there are six different voltages, and all of these voltages have to be at approximately the same voltage so that they don't drain unevenly. So a balance charger, what it does is uses this main lead to put current going through all of them at the same time to make it so they all charge quickly, but once that's done and they reach their max voltage of 4.2, it goes slightly above that to 4.22 volts. And then once it does that, it knows, okay, it's at the max, and then it stops charging those individual cells and starts charging the ones that are slightly behind, like this 3.78. Now I just let this run until all the batteries are at 4.2 volts. I've been really busy doing all these different projects on my YouTube channel, and I'm really appreciating all the love I'm getting. So keep it up, guys.